we have a wall down there and on top of that is another wall and on top of that is another wall three walls walls on walls on walls this is our big berm out here at the range and it was 20 feet tall which i thought was big enough but at the last range day we had a mad minute where we had like a hundred people with machine guns all firing and i think some people were hitting the ground first and it was skipping up and hitting the top of our berm which makes me think some of them probably skipped over the berm which means it would end up over there which is just force that i own not a huge deal but it's still a risk if someone just went back there to take a leak or something and then a bullet even though it's flipping it's still dangerous and could hurt them we don't want that to happen so we we'll make this as safe as possible we want no bullets to leave this range so we have 10 foot tall of railroad ties here which that's where everyone should be hitting you shouldn't miss more than a foot or two and so all your bullets should hit that but as an extra level of protection we have another 10 feet of dirt over it and then as an extra level of protection we have another 10 feet of telephone poles that will stop anything that might be hitting and ricocheting up so this is the safest range in the entire world because we have 30 feet of stopping power here. We were very worried about this wall blowing over because it is 30 feet tall and it's a solid wall. And this is not obviously undisturbed ground. That ground down there that has been there for hundreds of years is packed in really tight. This has been here for a couple months. So it is not packed in as tight. It will move, it'll shift a lot more than that solid ground. So when you put a telephone pole in normally, uh, you don't really have to worry about that because the solid ground is very hard. If you put it in freshly stirred up dirt, it's going to be able to walk. So we were worried that a big wind would come through one night and just knock the whole wall over, which would really be a pain in the butt because it would fall down and it was hard to put up here. So we buried them three to four feet deep, every single one of them. We hooked them all together with big screws in the back of these two by fours. And then we put concrete all around the entire base, tons of concrete to really hold them all together. So if one tries to fall, it can't. It's gonna have to take the whole wall and it's gonna have to take that huge base of concrete with it, which I don't think will happen. And to make sure, we're gonna put some other telephone poles going back this way. These two by fours right here are just temporary. Uh, that was just there to let the concrete dry, but we're gonna get some of the big telephone poles back here to come at an angle to make sure that this wall never blows over. Cause if it blows over, I'm in big trouble cause it was a big pain to put up. And it will be an even harder pain to fix if it falls down. So let's just not have that happen. Let me show you my other berm. So you could probably see it from the drone shots, but we built a entire second berm over here. Now this berm is still huge. That is about 15 feet tall from ground up to there. It looks lower because this one is 20 feet tall, but this is gonna be a little bit smaller berm, but you have over 180 degrees uh, shooting, which you almost do on this one. It's close. But really this one I wanted to just be super tall. For the big stuff we do right in the middle where we want just tons of stopping <laughs> that way. Anything crazy, anything that might throw stuff, we're gonna do it on this range because it is very tall, very protected. And you can shoot in a wide range here. But we wanted a second bay over here. Bay is such a wimpy word for what this is. This is a huge range as well. And you can shoot, you can stand here and shoot all the way back this way all the way around here and even back this way. And then, as you can see these excavators working over here, both ranges are gonna to come to a point right there and we put our Connex container right there in the middle. In the container we keep things like targets, uh, paper targets, metal targets. Um, we have a generator in there actually. We have just a bunch of stuff you need at a range. We got med kits in there. Um, we keep some ammo in there, um, eyes and ears, safety stuff, everything you would need at a normal range. We don't have a building out here yet. And so we decided we just want a big storage container. And we decided we're better to put it than right in the middle of both ranges. And these guys are gonna make the berm flow right into it and over it and so this thing will be buried on both sides with dirt and on the top now if i can just back down this berm without rolling the truck i've been researching bearing connex containers because people do it for like underground bunkers and stuff and every single thing i found says that you should reinforce the roof so we are not going to do that at all i'm just going to dump dirt on it and see what happens Cause like, how heavy could dirt even be? Before 
before we bury it in dirt though, wow, this is, that's squishy. We need to, we gotta take the roof vent out. Um, I'm feeling less confident now that I walk up here. It is very squishy, but we only need to put like four inches of dirt on top of it. And four inches is a lot in, in some aspects. But with dirt, it's, it's a very tiny amount, I think. So, because we are burying this in dirt, the dirt will get rained on and any holes in the metal means water will go in here. Which is not a huge deal, we don't put anything that important in here, but like, be nice to keep it dry. So, uh, I gotta scrape out this foam insulation that we had on here, and just kinda try to get cleaned up, and then we're gonna put metal over here and then try to totally seal this hole with weld. We may come caulk over it too. Now you just weld right on top of all this foam. Just kidding. It's gonna be really hard to, yeah, it'll be fine. But we gotta make it totally sealed. And as I've been messing around up here, we've decided we should strengthen this roof because it'll really stink um, for it to, you know, start caving in. We're only gonna put like four inches of dirt on there. But if it started collapsing, like there's nothing we can really do at that point to fix it. So we don't want it to get to that point. So we're just gonna do some simple angle iron down the middle. It's not a heavy, heavy load, but it's not light either. So we probably should support the roof at least a little bit. Yeah. beautiful oh no they're terrible so this is real thin this is real thick and it's just if I get this hot enough to melt it burns through this thin stuff that one's even thinner that's the other half we're gonna put on here but man I'm just like melting through everything even when I'm trying hard not to and this I got it on there thin so it didn't melt through but then as soon as I hammered it started cracking all the welds there so not structurally strong at all but I just needed to seal we might just cock the heck out of this. I got a fever. And the only prescription is more. I got a pro to come help me. Could not do it with the stick welding with the giant difference in metal sizes. It was just blowing through the little one every time. While he is doing that, I'm going to go grab some angle iron that I left Ooh, I am on a hill on a different part of this property so we can come back and try to make the roof not cave in. Oh, what's up Optimus? How's life? And this truck. We actually haven't been using it much lately because we haven't been doing like the cleanup as much. This is the uh, the truck that came with the property. We got it running again, V10 Triton, and um, yeah, it's it's just a it's a really old, ugly work truck, but it gets the job done sometimes. Sometimes it dies. Here is what we have to save the day. We <laughs> this angle iron came out of a building we knocked over, 
and we just saved it because it's super heavy duty. I mean, that is some thick stuff. So we'll just run a few of these across the top. It's gonna help, I think, kind of uh, support the roof from caving in with the dirt we put on it. These are so heavy. Ugh. I'm the strongest man I know, and these are still ugh, really heavy. Okay, now back to the range. We'll cut them and put them on there. Uh, don't worry about that right there. That's, you're fine. You're fine, suck it up. done uh he is a good welder and he was like this is the worst have them spaced here there there and then i have a thin uh rectangular tubing at the end because this is all gonna be covered in dirt except for the end um right here the dirt's gonna be going down the side and it won't be on top right here uh, because we didn't want it going past the doors here we want to just ending right there so i'll put this in just to have a little support so there's a little less spring here we're gonna start welding these angle irons on. Also, we got brand new Desperado shirts. Look how good they look. My 13 year old, whoa, hey, you guys falling over. Y'all been drinking this morning? Chill out, man. My 13 year old saw it this morning. She was like, I like that shirt. And I was like, thanks, do you want one? And she goes, no. I was like, all right, cool. the sides on on each of these so right now the sides are all done just the corners because that's where there's a big strong beam that one I welded the center in watch the difference already it's crazy this one is not welded in the middle yet and it moves that much but this one over here is welded in the middle and it doesn't move at all all this one has is there there and right here and it does not move at all it is so much stronger already so I'm gonna probably put uh, just about every foot I'll put a little couple inch weld there to hold that thing up so this thing is all it's doing is supporting this roof from falling down we're gonna basically have it hugged up against it and so it'll you know it'd be nicer if we had more but that's all I had that were free and I think it's fine it's better than nothing and I think nothing might work just not confident that nothing will work. But I'm confident this will work. Well, I'm, I'm confident-ish. Just taking a break from that. I uh, got in my truck so I can make my video go live. Um, it's the uh, the video we're talking about, the Eclipse. Just got the website all like ready to go live to have you guys come out here for the Eclipse. So that video is live, announcing all that. 
and that's really exciting. I'm gonna sit here for a second. Also, uh, booty snapple. So someone already reserved a spot. That was crazy. Uh, the video is eight minutes long. It has only been live for nine minutes, leaving only one minute of time that if this guy started watching as soon as I went live, he watched the whole video and then he had one minute to place an order and he nailed it. And someone else just reserved a spot. Okay, we had no idea how to price these things. We tried to price them to where it was a fair and reasonable price. Um, a little bit lower for the smaller spots, a little bit bigger for the bigger RV spots. And uh, we just kind of guessed, it's our first time. We wanted it to obviously generate some funds, but we also wanted it to be a fair price for everybody. I think we nailed it because it's a two night, three day event and we tried to think about something that we would be willing to pay if we were going camping up somewhere and all they had was an eclipse. But um, my plan is to under promise and over deliver. So we basically all we said in that first video is you get a piece of dirt and a river and an eclipse. That's all I'll guarantee. I said I'm gonna try for like food trucks and try for live music and try for other things that are fun to do, but no guarantee on those. We were actually making some headway on all those other things and I'm hoping we can make that happen because I really want people to be excited that they booked just a piece of dirt and that's all they thought they were getting but then they get all this other stuff and it's like way more fun than they thought. Under promise, over deliver, always in life. That'll get you far. I patched a hole right there, a little patch panel, welded that up, and then I covered it with roofing sealant. Also on all these little holes, we had holes down the middle because we have lights hanging in there, put roofing sealant on that as well, and then covered that huge patch that we made for that vent in roofing sealant as well. We have everything welded and sealed that we're gonna weld and seal, so now we're gonna start dumping dirt along the sides of this. I got it on video! <laughs> We're gonna start dumping dirt along the sides of this thing. Pearl is hard, I've stalled out pearls, not a big deal. Uh, and we'll pack the sides and then we'll start putting a very, very thin layer on the roof. Super thin and lightweight. We'll find the lightest dirt and the lightest rocks that we can find for up there, like lava rocks only. Start burying the sides. And the top a little bit. I'm nervous. Because if this thing does start caving in, there's like nothing you can do to fix it. Like, I mean, even if we pull all the dirt off and got something in the inside and pushed it back out, it's still gonna be all screwed up and the integrity is gonna be totally gone. So we really need this to not cave in today. Or any day. Like, I'm also worried that the first time it rains and it's got a bunch of extra water weight up there, it might just start sinking. But I think today is gonna be the most dangerous day when we're first putting that layer of dirt all on top. Wish me luck. There is gonna be pressure from the sides too. We didn't reinforce these at all because this is like way more heavily corrugated than the roof is. You can see all these little burn marks where I welded up top. But the roof just does not have much, much corrugation. There's not a whole lot of level change, which means it's not as strong. And all the weight's pushing straight down. This weight's only gonna be pushing in from the weight kind of pushing and squeezing out the bottom of that pile, which won't be as crazy as weight on top. I think, I'm not a scientist, I don't, wait, I am a scientist. All the spots are sold out, every, every one of them. Uh, so you guys who waited, sorry, no clips for you. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if we can find some spots to put more. Maybe we open up the second pasture for the people who didn't get in in the first less than two hours. I'm sorry for you guys who were working and came home from work and oh, it's all sold out. People have been waiting for this for like a month and we've been trying to get everything figured out and we just did and I didn't think they would sell out in like an hour and a half, but here we are. So just hold tight. I'll have an update in the next video. More dirt. Oh my gosh, that's, that needs some oil bad. It's gonna be covered all the way to here and then that pile will slope down right there. So all you'll see sticking out of the berm is that little end right there. Now we're gonna have the entire length of that thing be a no shoot zone. So from right here on, there's gonna be signs that like, there's no targets there, you don't shoot over there. Its job is to store stuff. We put it right there to help divide the two ranges. So you can have a class over here while Brandon Herrera shooting over there. And it won't, no one will bother each other because it's totally divided and they're both safe from each other. The berm is going to further make that safe, totally bulletproofing that center divider between the two ranges. Targets are all over here, this entire range here. 
but that's no shoot from either side. The other reason we're covering in dirt is to keep it cool. These shipping containers get super hot in the summer. That's why we put a vent on them because these were sitting outside at Bunker Branding and they were full of merch and people go in there to get the merch to come ship it and it was just boiling hot in the summer. So having the dirt all over it will make it like an underground bunker, a cave, it'll stay nice and cool. Not cool, but it won't be 150. And the last reason we're burying a Connex container in the berm is because it's gonna look awesome. The back corner is totally covered, which means that back wall and the back part of this right wall are covered. Ah! I don't see any bowing at all. That was good. Whoa. So that's the difference of this. Real loud. Solid. Crazy. That's another pro that I hadn't thought of. It's normally in shipping containers it's super echoey. Once we have dirt all around it on the sides and the roof, it's gonna be not nearly as, it won't really be equity at all, I bet. Is this gonna work out? Will this get caved in when we put dirt on top of it? What is Mikey's ethnicity? Find out next time on Renovating an Abandoned Resort. Uh, we're, it's the end of the day, and my operator went home. So, um, they won't let me drive that. <laughs>